You're watching Telecom TV from SDN NFE World Congress in The Hague. And I'm joined now by Ulf Bragnall, Director of Product Management at INEA. Ulf, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Now, it's been five years since the first NFV white paper was published. Where are we now in terms of the viability of the technology and the adoption by service providers? I think we have to look at the different use cases. So NFE, what's interesting with NFV is that it involves so many different use cases. So you have everything from, uh, let's say, EPC, uh, which is primarily a control plane driven use case, all the way to VBRAS, which is a very data plane heavy use case, or VCP, which is a mix of the two. So, um, and, and I think the maturity and, and um, where we are depends a lot at what you look at. So I think in general for some of the more control plane driven applications like EPC, for example, where you can apply sort of standard data center virtualization principles pretty much as is, I think we're there. From from uh, from a lot of perspective, both in terms of um, server hardware, virtualization platforms, and orchestration, I think we're, we're we're getting to that point. I think where we struggle is when we start to look at the more edge perspectives. We look at how how can we get data throughput and orchestration and flexibility uh, packaged together uh, in a similar way. That that's there's still work to be done in that in that area, definitely. So when we look at the edge, what needs to happen to speed up this process? I think definitely collaboration. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the only way forward. And uh, I think that, that's one of the problems we're, we're seeing a little bit uh, as we move closer to the edge. I mean, we see a, a, a lot of sort of vendor-specific ecosystem forming, vendor-specific open source project forming. If we look at, for example, we have Mech, we have OpenFog, we have the Cord project. It's starting to be very diverse and to some extent heterogeneous and that's always uh, an issue. Uh, so I think what we need to do is really find ways of collaborating both around what it would look like architecturally but also collaborate around open source because that is really what is going to make this happen. They mentioned open source and in the NFE industry we have this balance between open source and industry standards. What needs to happen to effectively manage this? That's an extremely important question. And I think we've seen this, I wouldn't say failing, but we've seen issues with it before. If you look at OpenFlow and Open Networking Foundation, uh, they did early work in standardizing OpenFlow. They looked at the uh, north-south uh, protocol, southbound protocol, did that well. But they didn't really keep up with the industry when it came to east, west, north, south, northbound a APIs, and thus OpenFlow have today. I mean, lost a lot of its uh, its mojo, right? And and we see Etsy somehow struggling a little bit. You know, communities like OpenStack, OpenFE are de facto driving the standardization. And the problem we're seeing, which is similar to where ONF ended up with OpenFlow, is that the, the higher level of of the standard. Of, of the protocol stack has not been uh, standardized. I see Etsy came out, I think earlier this week or last week, with standardization. It's very timely because that's one of the serious issues we're looking at is really VNF onboarding, all the uh, APIs uh, and protocols uh, marrying the whole stack together on the manual side. I think if we can't get that right, um, this will be very difficult for us. So it's very important for those organizations to try and keep the same pace as the open source community. Otherwise, we end up in a, in a much more diverse place than we should be. INEA is known for its expertise in network edge technologies. What would you say are the key success factors for NFE at the edge? So I think from my perspective, again, coming back to the heterogeneity of, of, of the edge and, and the, the, the different use cases, I think it's, it's extremely important that we find a common platform a standardized platform with standardized APIs. Our contribution to that is to uh, come to market with a platform that does enable that. For example, I mean, if you look at our NFE Access product, it, it supports different kinds of ARM devices, different kinds of Intel devices. It's a homogeneous platform for a, a wide variety of edge devices. So that gives a service provider the ability to run virtual machines, standard virtual machines on those platforms. So that's one example. Um, but I think also being flexible in the type of ways you can orchestrate the platform is important. So you, you won't be able to roll exactly the same 
uh, IT standards across the edge. There needs to be a little bit more flexibility, and I think the role we have as a vendor is to take some of that, that complexity away from the service provider. That, that's our contribution. We're starting to hear a lot about zero-touch automation in the NFE industry. First of all, what is it? And also, what are some of the best ways to manage resources at the network edge? So it, if we look at the edge, a lot of the costs, say a lot of the drivers for edge virtualization is actually around cost. So lowering the operational expenditures, for example. New services, new revenue from new services is the way I view it, the sort of the second step of this journey. The first step is to lower the operational cost. And I've been in discussions with service providers that had actually 27 different types of devices deployed in various places at customer premises in the network and just managing the life cycle that is very difficult and, and, and expensive. So I think zero touch provisioning is, is a way of overcoming that. So once you go virtualized, uh, you deploy your functionality as VNFs. That's part of the, uh, part of the solution, but if you can't, if, if deploying them becomes a manual process, you're almost back to where you started, right? So zero touch provisioning is really a way of going all the way in, in the terms of saving cost and at the edge. Today when service providers look to orchestrate their resources and services, they're doing so in a, in a mixed hybrid environment. Yes, uh, I think very much so. I mean, we have to, and a lot of, of the operators t talked about it during the week, that there is a uh, legacy that needs to be catered to. When we introduce NFE, we have to do it in a way where we can preserve legacy systems in parallel. And mo many of those legacy systems are actually managed by NetConf, SNMP, and, and different, of, different types of legacy protocols. Uh, so I think the way we look at it, it is very unlikely that someone would come in, rip and replace with OpenStack API. So in, the, in this environment, the, the, the systems needs to be able to work with both NetConf Yang way of orchestrating platform as well as OpenStack in, in different mixes. Right? And that's something we've taken to heart and uh, our, our platform does support both OpenStack APIs, NetConf Yang modeling and actually containers, which is something we haven't talked about that much, but is is a very interesting future area. Ulf, thank you very much indeed.